poppin' everybody. Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and I am your host. Here with me today is my brother Jay, who will be in every episode. The other host, as I am mostly known to some people in the in the Patreon server. <laughs> mm, mm-hmm. No. Yeah. No. Special mm-hmm. guest. Special special guest. I, I truly though, thank you for being here today yeah. to converse back and forth with me. Well, I'm glad you you know you had me back on. Me too, me too. Yeah. Right, really, to, to be honest, I couldn't do it without you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, before we before we really dive on into today's bucket of popped kernels, yeah, fresh hot popcorn. The only way to really enjoy a good like if you're buy, if you're ordering popcorn at the movies, if you have anything less than a bucket, I feel like you've done you've 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 misstepped. One thousand agreements. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Actual written letters. I. I. As you said it. 1,000 of them arrived. Wow. All of them saying, I agree with this sentiment. Amazing. And yeah, no, I, I mean, if you're getting a, a bag, a bag of popcorn, mm. I think not. I think, I think not. Now, of course, the problem is that the markup on movie popcorn is like 5,000% or something. It's a bit high. It's like, it's like $9. Or something. Okay, here's a, here's a <laughs> something that is that must only cost them like thirty cents. Right, here's a ripe idea for you. All right, let me let me lay it down. Let me lay it down. Okay, so one day we open a movie theater. Mm. Right, free popcorn. Ben, let me tell you something. There is a movie theater in Roanoke that just went out of business. Are you telling me that we have? There's a vacancy. We have the wide open rain yeah. to open the first ever popcorn culture cinemas. Popcorn. Yeah, that's. I guess so. Yeah. Popcorn culture cinemas. Popcorn culture cinemas. Free popcorn. Free popcorn. At the movies. At you know the what? Movies. Okay. Here's a question. Then let me <laughs> let me let me administer this question right now in here. Yeah. Um. If your movie ticket cost one dollar more, would you pay that premium for free popcorn at the movies? Mm. Because like like you know that's that's what it's coming. Here's not everybody buys. Not everybody buy, buys popcorn, mm. right? Right. But like, so slightly less high premium yeah. than paying like, you know, $11 for a bucket. Yeah. But you're always paying it regardless. So you pay pay more for the ticket, free popcorn. Let me let me go 10 steps further in that same direction. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Get ready. It's not just $1 free pop, $1 upcharge on the ticket. Make, I'm screwed. You know, I'm saying more like. Ten dollars more on the ticket, but what we're talking? It's better. This it is, better be good. No, yeah. What I think, which we don't have around here, but which I know exists, is like luxury movie theaters. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, Where like yeah, yeah. you have you have a, a nice, comfortable seat, right? That can like be reclined. Like the maximum occupancy of that theater is like thirty to fifty or something. Okay, less not people. massive, less sure. people, and. Wait, this is where it gets great, Ben. Okay. Wait, staff. What? Yeah. So now, pop, at this point, you, you've obviously bought your popcorn. That comes free. Whatever. That's good. But if you need a refill on that drink, you just push the little button. Someone will come up and be like, you want a refill? You want, I got you, it. You need something? You need something? I got Because I can help with that. Yeah. Did you want you want a hot dog or something else? You know, coffee? I, spirits? Spirits? Libations? Oh. You know what I'm saying? Now I we're do. getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Now we are getting somewhere. So I'm liking the sound of this. I'm liking the sound of it. Also, I'm thinking good solid wages, you know, for those folks coming yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Part of the premium experience is knowing that everybody there is well paid. Yes. Properly compensated. Right. Good I, I feel wages. Like people, I, I feel like businesses undervalue that idea to me. Like, I mm-hmm. feel like if I were to go to an establishment where I knew that the people that were working there were well compensated for it. Yeah. I think that would even like. That would make you the customer go more. It would make me happy to know that I was going to a place where like somebody was doing a job that they were like, like they felt. What's the best way to describe this? Like it was worth their time, you know, yeah. like like it was just a good place to be. Right. Where if. What is typically thought of as like a minimum wage job suddenly garners a little bit more respect from the employee for the position because of the wages. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so yeah, we're, we're we're fully there. Basically, this is how we reinvent the movie theater experience. Yeah. Which he's is going to be a question like mm-hmm. going forward. I mean, we're I think that we're absolutely looking at like a possible break in the status quo. And it's so hard to have like a paradigm shift happen Mm -hmm. because there's so much like 
both kinetic and potential energy that are driving an idea that's always been an idea forward. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like it's we're all accustomed to it. It's what we're used to. And it's not until that comes to a screeching halt that the opportunity for change is like injected into the equation. Right. And so right now I would say that the the current quarantine circumstances are that thing. And we've found ourselves in a situation where like the movie theater is really like it it is ripe for being reinvented. Basically. Well, yeah. So the movie theater that went out of business, it was like uh, it was a regal. Right. And yes. they have just they basically just shut down all of their locations mostly. Right. Right. I think so. And I, I believe that I've also heard that uh, AMC theaters is looking like they, they could be headed in a similar direction. Like I think that they're mm-hmm. they're running short on cash and like the decision, um, I believe, for Disney to take Soul. Yeah, the uh, Pixar movie the, Soul. The Pixar movie Soul and release that direct to streaming was kind of like one of those big hits where it was like, man, we were like, that was like one of the things we were sort of counting on yeah. as like that end of the year, last little extra push to give us something else to to work with. So, yeah, I mean, basically movie theaters in in trouble, having some difficulties. For sure. But so this is an interesting problem then if if the quarantine lasts long enough that big movie theater chains like if like tons of movie theaters just disappear and then quarantine ends, will how will they come back? You know, like the infrastructure seems like maybe the infrastructure still exists, but Will they come back in such a big way? Like, will it take a long time for the movie theaters to come all the way back? This is that's what I can't quite wrap my head around, because to me, it almost feels like, you know, if you were um, an investor of sorts, like it it almost seems like the idea of going to the movies and the industry itself is way too lucrative that I don't know who these people are. Actually, I, I imagine it's funny, like hedge funds. I've just always imagined that people who are so wealthy, for whatever reason, I know that a hedge fund has nothing to do with actual shrubberies, but in my mind, right. I always imagine these houses are like lined with like really immaculate hedges. For sure, they have good landscaping. Yeah, good landscaping. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's just so. What is what is the point? <laughs> what is? Oh, those people though, <laughs> people with hedges. Yeah, they will. In my mind, it's like, well, surely they're just like they're just waiting. You know, every everybody's sitting there and they know like. At some point in time, the the starting gun will will fire and it will be like, who can be the first person to gobble up a new movie theater and reopen it fast enough to be the, the first person there? Right. So in my what I'm saying is basically like everyone is able to equally acknowledge like, hey, right now, not a good time to own a movie theater. But 18 months from now might be a really great time to be the first person to reopen a movie theater. So it's almost like nobody's really waiting outside of Best Buy for like the Black Friday sales right now. Yeah. And maybe this year won't altogether. But like the idea would be when will people start lining up outside of that door to be the people that are holding the keys to the movie theater when it's time at the right time? Because in my mind, it's like it's going to come back. Like I, I can't imagine it not coming back. Yeah. It's like going to the movies is such like a such a such such a pastime for everyone. Right. Like, and it's not, I, I keep thinking of it almost like how cable, for example, it, it, it's almost felt like cable prices were going up and up and up because there was more and more and more and better content that, yeah. that you could watch by having a cable package. So yeah. like, I, I believe at one point in time, maybe it wasn't uncommon to be spending $150 a month plus on a premium cable subscription. Sure. So then all of a sudden, you know, like when you've got like Netflix and Hulu and, you know, like other streaming services, it's like, man, I could like I could go through, cancel my cable subscription and just have these two pay 20 bucks a month. No big. But then sure enough, what what we're watching is that cable packages have basically just become a la carte, you know, so like you literally it's like, well, I have like a Apple Plus subscription, Disney Plus subscription, Netflix, Hulu and Amazon Prime or whatever, right. all of which are somewhere between eight and fourteen dollars a month. When you have six of them, looky there, we're back oh, up yeah, to you're back up to it. Yeah. You're back up to the same. You know, maybe not, maybe not quite as much as it was at one point in time, but it's a lot. Yeah, if you throw YouTube TV in there, then it's the same. Right. Well, that basically is a. It's like it's an abbreviated form of cable anyway, because you get a lot of the stations you would typically get. 
Right. But so point is, is that like in our lifetime, we've basically watched like a cable package effectively, if not yet completely uh, dying. Yeah. You know, like it's not going to continue to be what we know it as currently. Uh, but that's the thing about the movie theater experience is that I just I I can't imagine what they can do because it's like it's being there. Yeah. You know, like, how do you recreate it at home? How do you go through and deliver almost even like and I don't know why this is like what keeps coming to my mind when I like talk to people about this. But like, how do you deliver the sticky floors back to people? Oh, no, you don't want the sticky floors, but I know you what want, you mean. No, you don't want the sticky floors, but it's still it's it's like, you know, yeah. it's such a thing. Like there is there is um, an, an intangible effect when you go to the movies and you like watch and you like you experience the same thing in the same room as a bunch of other people together. Right. Whether you know them or not. And the fact that, you know, the a lot of movies are, you know, they're shot in a format that is intended to be seen that large. Yes. You know, like when you when you, know, you see like those little disclaimers before they pop up on TV or before your DVD, it's like this movie has been formatted to fit this TV screen. It's like, yeah, that's because the original formatting was for the really big one. The really huge screen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or yeah, like yeah. that, whatever the dimensions are for that. Um, and, you know, they have the, you know, the better, the better sound system. It's like, it's just when you're at the movies, you're not distracted by the things at your house. So like you could conceivably even put a giant screen in your house and put it in a dark room or whatever. Right. But you're still, uh, you can, you can get up and leave. You can go somewhere else in the house. You can have your phone with you. I mean, I know people get on their phones at the movies, but like that's very frowned upon. Sure. And the, uh, that, that experience is hard to recreate at all. It is. It is. Yeah. Like, like going to a place where you can, plan for your attention to be uninterrupted yes is a big deal and i think that probably part of why you might take in a movie better at the theaters is because you are less likely to pull out your phone and just start scrolling right you know paid to be there yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah. whereas like at at home i could even be watching a movie that i like and have somebody text me or get a notification or a prompt and before I know it, you know, I didn't watch five minutes of the movie and and like whether or not I like put my phone back down and I get back into it, some magic was lost there. Mm-hmm. Like I, I stopped being fully absorbed along the way. But then if we want to flip it on its head, there are home viewing experiences that like that I believe streaming services have almost found a way to get everybody like in it together and i i would say like game of thrones the game of thrones experience to me would probably mm. be the best version of this like oh yeah, yeah i see what you mean we're like you're you're like following on like twitter and like social media afterwards and like every everyone is collectively tuning in every week to watch this thing right like you're doing it together separately yeah but th- even that's not a movie that's like a sketch that's a just tv it is just tv but like it's this is where if anybody was trying to make the argument like, OK, if you want to talk about like like the movie theater ver- experience versus the experience of watching something at home, you could also argue like are and I don't think that my answer to this question would be that it is a problem. But uh, is there any threat that these bingeable television shows that are in total, you know, 14 to 20 hours long per season or whatever, mm-hmm. like how are we? Is there any danger that two hours won't be enough time to tell a story in the way that we want it to be told? Oh, I don't think so. I think it I think because there, there's plenty of like great movies that are only two hours long. Of course. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I think a lot of times what feels like when movies like if you ever watch like an original movie, that's just like that, you know, the people thought of it and intended it to be a movie those tend to you know fit that structure better i think you often feel like it wasn't enough time when they're trying to adapt something that was originally long form into something Certainly. short form so like you know any any book to movie adaptation ever suffers from this and you're like oh they needed more time whereas when you yeah put it into like a giant series like on tv it's like oh now there's enough time now we can see everything right 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 but i, I think that like we've also become a little bit more patient because it's it's felt like the payoff has frequently been worth it mm-hmm. because you might wait and wait and wait for your favorite character to do that one thing to come in and um you know uh like realize their full potential or something and then yeah. once it happens especially if you've waited 
seasons or an entire season's worth of show for that moment to happen. You're like, oh, it happened. It's there. Yeah. Like, and it feels it feels so worth it. So I guess that basically would would to, to circle back to the original thoughts, I, I guess, here is 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 two hours, basically. And, and this, I guess, our agreement would be that it's not too short of a period of time to tell a compelling story. No, I don't think so at all. Um, it, because the, the other thing about when you watch, when you like binge television shows or even shows that are intended to be binged, like so many, like anything on Netflix almost is anymore. There is this weird effect where like one, like my wife will, she, if I ever sit down, say like, oh, do you want to sit down and watch a movie? She'll be like, ah, uh, yeah. She'll like say no because she can't pay attention for the full time. But like, meanwhile, we'll get, you know, sucked down three episodes of an hour long show. And it's like, we just, that was the same thing. That's what I mean, you know? though. This is the restructuring of like our attention spans is like, you almost know that you're going to have like three bite size, big bite size pieces of the story. But like, I don't know, it, it's almost like your attention can like reset and be like ready for like episode two, episode three. Yeah. But it's so much harder to like maintain it for. For the two hours. For the two I hours. You, yeah, I see what you mean. But it is it is weird, though. Yeah, because you'll it's like, OK, we just watched three hours. We could have watched a movie instead. I don't know what happened there. But the other thing about TV or like shows like this is that they so definitively follow like just the the pattern of TV, which is where almost inevitably you will have about four really important episodes per season, like especially like where you have the premiere something crazy will happen right. and they'll set up the the conflict that needs to be resolved by the end. But spoilers, that's not going to be resolved until the end. Right. You know, it's like, oh, is this the arc we're going on? Great. We're going to have lots of failed attempts and lots of funny moments and lots of drama, but it's not really going to be resolved until 21 episodes from now. Sure. At the very end. It's like, and you, you do know that too. You know, you know? that. And, and I, I think that I frequently experience this where, I'm I'm way too as I'm watching a lot of shows I'm way too aware of the mechanics of the show yeah to where it's like oh like they're, they're setting this character up for a redemption or like they can't conclude they can't like beat this villain right now because there's three episodes left and like what else would be rest like what else would be like interesting enough to keep you watching the rest of the season right if they beat him in this you know, uh, dockside brawl or whatever. Right. It's like, so it, we, we know they're all walking away from this one. Right. You know, and, and it, sometimes I do think that that's almost problematic within the context of watching a, a television show is like, if you're too aware of the actual structure of the show and like how it has to work, yeah, then it can almost get in the way of like your ability to just like literally sit there and like take it in. Yeah. And Anything, anything can happen. Circling back, I feel like this exact reason, though, is why Game of Thrones was successful because they like subverted that expectation specifically, where you're like, nothing permanent or, or big is going to happen between episodes one and episodes finale. Yes. And you're like, oh, no, never mind. Four main characters just died permanently. Oh, oh, whoops. <laughs> Wait, yeah. But, well, <laughs> that's not, this doesn't normally happen on episode uh, seven, guys. This is maybe that, huh? Okay. <laughs> is Arya a bigger deal than I, than I realized? But Rob is king of the north. Right. Come on. He's, he's not, he's dead. He looks real dead. I can't put his head back on. Okay. But so this is my question though. So okay, maybe this is what I was trying to build up to before is why, why was it so momentous to, and I would say the Mandalorian is probably... Very nicely, I think as of this episode coming out, it comes out today, uh, Friday. Is it? It's the 30th, right? The 30th, yep. Also, happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday, Ben. Hey, yeah, my birthday was three days ago. Three days ago. Yeah. Or, well, as we're as people are hearing it, like, almost a week now. I know, yeah. That's God, man, news. stop celebrating. What are you, like a birthday week person? No, I'm not. Okay. okay. But this is this is like what I'm saying, though, is like... You've got shows that come out and it's like everybody and you almost know like part of what makes it fun is that you know that everyone else is so on the edge of their seat. Like everyone else just can't wait to know what happens next that the experience of watching it from home is just as golden as the movie theater experience. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? 
like like maybe maybe the movie theater is better for a story that like you don't know what's going to happen start to finish yeah necessarily so like you get to go in and it's like i know it's going to be a good story because the trailer hooked me or because it's a character that i know from the source material or just for whatever reason like is it because like with with game of thrones for example there there can be so much independent individual speculation week by week where it's like oh man they left it off there can't wait to like tune back in and see like what happens Mm -hmm. what happens next yeah because that's i guess that's what it comes down to to me is that i would compare watching a new episode of game of thrones watching a new episode of the mandalorian to my theater experience of watching the force awakens in theaters oh i don't know if i'll go that far at all no no really yeah i get pretty stoked i mean i get pretty stoked but it's not like i don't i I wouldn't compare it to like sitting down to watch the force awakens in the theater okay well maybe force awakens was really good so yeah. you know that's not true for those <laughs> sure that was like 20 years of anticipation how about yeah. the rise of skywalker yeah. <laughs> is, it, is that a more agreeable no, analogy it's not, because that was that was no it's not it's okay. not I okay i think so um, Andrew, okay so maybe maybe this is a personal difference between you and i then even like in the way that we go and approach it in terms of what sensation we might be feeling because i i think for me like when i go into the theater it's usually like the the maximum amount of excitement is probably like in and maybe it's because we deep dive so hard into a lot of the movies that we're seeing in theaters yeah that like i i know that i'm going to sit in the chair with my bucket of popcorn and i'm about to get answers to questions that i've got right like, like are we right are we wrong like what's what's going on here so maybe that's that's part of it for me and maybe but i mean i there's not like a like a non-event feeling to certain big tv shows like if i if, you know the mandalorian maybe is a good example because like if that's coming out i'm not gonna just sit down you know with my phone in my hand and the kids running around and you know just it to in a, in a position where I can be interrupted and I'm gonna have to pause and get up like it is gonna be at a point where I can sit start to finish and no one's gonna talk to me yeah 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 I think that's sort of what I'm saying like you've almost like you've almost like cleared a space for the activity yeah you know it's like yeah you're not you're not just watching it amongst chaos or like as a way to cure boredom at night like it's it's something that you're like right yeah it is it is a planned event i'll give you that okay okay but i don't think it's the same i don't it's not the same as going to the movies it's not going it's not the same as going to the movies so the the big question that i think i keep coming back to in my head is like i feel like the first big movie that we got at home was mulan um you know the live action version of mulan and it was i think that i think it ended up being a movie that was sort of like it felt like there was almost like a little bit of like a popped balloon effect with it where it was like i was really excited about it when they first announced it and like mulan is you know one of the most popular disney princesses at least yeah um, uh, you know amongst the audience of people that we have amassed by talking about like disney movies it's it is like the fan favorite yeah everyone it, likes mulan yeah so the idea of like mulan coming out at first was like oh man like this is gonna like a, like a real one like it's gonna be so cool and then by the time i finally got there i was kind of like okay like let's like like let's watch this thing but so i've always like you know wondered what if what if it was endgame oh like that came out in that way what if it was avengers endgame like what right. if what if the first movie that we got at home was something that was like so highly anticipated and would have just been like a right oh boy that like that'd be interesting because i think that could still happen i don't know hmm maybe not i mean nothing nothing's ever gonna like nothing could be as big as endgame for like another couple decades <laughs> the the thing I, I i don't know if anything could ever be like endgame again because at least in terms of the anticipation and for me i would say that avengers endgame was almost like getting to be excited about a vacation for six months yeah you know and then like and then you're there and the vacation's great and it's fun and you're like glad to be there and everything but like i i don't know that anything will ever beat my anticipation for it because i rode that wave and like cherished it yeah you know like the the mystery of it like how is it going to be resolved like what's going to happen like that was such a positive experience for me Mm -hmm. to get to go through that but the big thing about endgame is that you know you're talking a 20 i forget how many it was 22 movie build up to that event yep but you didn't realize that it was building up to that in the capacity that it was 
probably for the first 12 movies. Right. Like for a while, we were just going and seeing superhero movies and there was a fair amount of continuity and that was fun and cool. And then, hey, they're all on the screen together. Like, how cool is that? And then it was like, they're all on the screen together again, but like more of them this time. And yeah, you know, and Spider-Man, what? Huh? You know, but like, it, I felt like it was a really, really, really good job of of a really wide net that brought in a lot of people that slowly got smaller and smaller and smaller until it was a very focused like scope that was left. And then, and then you were, you like very gently lulled into the Holy crap. This is insane. Yeah. Reaction to the, to the grand finale, two part grand finale. Uh, and end game was good. I don't know. Yeah. It's going to be hard to redo that for sure. And it'd be, it'd, yeah, it'd be so weird if end game had come out during quarantine and they had just like Disney plus it. Yes. You know. And and so yeah, to to again come back to our conversation, the point of what we're trying to to answer here is would it require the right catalyst for consuming movies at home for it to change our perception of like that's how we consume blockbuster movies does that make sense do, do you understand the question i don't i don't know if i do this is you've actually brought this up before about yeah. how I, I like when i start throwing like sat words at yeah. my 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 the, yeah like the qualifiers the for qualifiers. your questions yeah I, I guess what i'm saying is like is in, in the world like let's fast forward to the future where blockbuster movies are consumed at home is the in the parallel universe where that happens is the only path that leads us down that the right starting point like you almost need you need that first movie that people care about so much to where the experience is so good even at home to where it like changes the way that we think about how these are supposed to be taken in because it's because you if you could have such a good at home movie experience that it was like it took away your need to be in a theater yeah I may I, I do understand what you're saying. Like you have to have like uh, is what, the only way to get people to stop going to the movies to create a, like a, a an event that is so big that people are just like agree that staying at home is better. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and like so the argument that I'm saying out loud now is is Mulan was not that catalyst. Right. But could Endgame have been that catalyst? if the timing had been different. I don't think it could have. No, okay. No, because it's not like movies, it's not like they're, like, you know, on Netflix, they just release movies there all the time. You know, they're not, but I I do think, I know what you mean, though. I think this has happened to cable, though. Like, like it's happened to TV. Okay. And I think the exact... the exact show that it was was House of Cards. Um, okay. Yes, yes. Yes. Prime example. Yeah. Now we're yes. We're I think we're we're back to where I'm thinking. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. Um, where it was like all of a sudden Netflix created their own show. Yep. And it was on a streaming service you already had. And until then, everything on Netflix came from other things. Right. And then Netflix came out with House of Cards and it was like this show is so compelling and so good. It is worth having netflix yes and like that's been, and then they immediately also like the the one-two punch was house of cards and then orange is the new black right like right out of the gate and there were other shows they were releasing too but those were the two really big ones that i feel like literally changed television yes yeah. yes 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 no and this is this uh, it's such a good example and my i think what i was fishing for was almost what would be be because i think my argument for for movies is like if not endgame then what Right. Like what's a bigger what is a bigger blockbuster event than Endgame? And the answer is currently nothing. Right. Like that is the biggest. Yeah, like money wise for sure. Yes. That has ever yeah, hit the screens. Right, 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 right. So ah, pan. So I don't know. The it's cause it it almost has to be something that hasn't really been invented or at least hasn't gripped yet. Like there's there's like watch parties right. you can sort of do. Which I don't know what the potential for that is where, you know, someone could be streaming and they can like press a button and it'll like start the movie for everyone remotely. So you're all watching together separately. Right. And maybe there's something there, but that still doesn't seem like that seems like it could maybe replace that like movie theater feeling because you're still with a bunch of strangers. Maybe you could even see like the comments and stuff that are coming in but 
I don't, I don't know. I can't imagine, because I, I don't know if people consume movies in the same way that you consume TV. Like, not as many people care about movies as maybe, like, as, like, a thing. Like, you have a TV in your house. Right. And so you can just turn the TV on and watch that whenever you want. But, like, you can't just go to the movies whenever you want. Right. You know, at, like, any given time. You can't just, like, wake up and be like, I'm at the movies. Right. Right, right, right. You know? It's like it is a it is a separate experience. So I don't I don't know if it exists and it could it. I don't think it's been invented yet. Well, right, right. No, I, I, I don't you. think it's a matter of I think it's, it has to be a different kind of viewing experience that isn't what we already have. OK, well, and I think I, I think that that's I think it's reasonable. I, I guess I just I feel like I can I can so simultaneously and, and this is like where I don't know there's like a gap in my, my mental imagination between like, I can imagine a world where the idea of going to the movie theaters would feel archaic. Like I, where it would feel like going to rent a movie from a, from a place, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, why would you like, you you guys used to have to go to a store and you would have to like rent a movie and then return it. Right. Properly rewound? I can totally, yeah, I can I can see, I can feel this argument from the future where you have some punk teenager being like, you used to go to a place to watch a movie once with strangers at a specific time instead of just like pulling it up on your phone or whatever uh, yeah. whatever they have in the future right okay and so and, yeah and to take that one step further and it's like and and they'd be like well how, and how much did it, they must have been like really cheap then right like like a dollar it was, it was like 15 isn't that how much a month of streaming co- you can you can pay for a month of streaming with right. more hours of of video content than you could consume <laughs> inside of that month yeah for 15 dollars right and you get to see it one time yeah <laughs> Exactly. And the floor is sticky? Yeah, it's like, no, it was amazing. You don't know. You don't know. You don't, you don't know. You weren't at The Force Awakens. You didn't see Endgame. No. <laughs> yeah, I can feel that argument coming from the future. But what they're doing, yeah, unless it's just convenience or something like that. Yeah, or it's just like, because because of that, like, intangibleness. Because that those arguments already make sense. It's like, yeah, why would, why would I go to the movie theater and pay 15 bucks when I could get two months of Netflix for the same thing and... Like, why would I go to the movie when it's going to come on the Disney Plus eventually in four months and I can just watch it for free? Right, right, right. Well, and I mean, so the argument could have existed, too. So, like, even go go back before streaming, it would be like, so you're paying a premium to see. And maybe this is what it comes down to or, or what used to be so very different is that the caliber of and the quality of a blockbuster movie was so much bigger than like what you might see on like television. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and maybe that's where like television has made up a lot of ground on blockbuster cinema because you can now have television shows, you know, game of Thrones, for example, where it's not low budget, right? You know, they're not CGing like a, like a, like a army in or whatever. It's like, there are actual extras. Yeah. Like everywhere. The costumes are incredible. Yeah. And, like, the, like the caliber of it's so good. And so what I was saying, though, is that back back before the argument could have been like, so you're paying a premium to go and see it. What? Like you could just wait three to six months and buy it for almost the same buy the DVD, buy the VHS right. for almost the same cost as a movie ticket. And then you own it. So you're paying that premium to see it before everyone else. Is is that what it comes down to? Oh, totally though. <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah. And so th- that's why, I, like, we go to like midnight showings. It's like I don't even want one day's worth of people to be able to ruin this movie for me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But the ruining only happened mostly because of social media, because of the ability to to put those ideas out there versus like that one jerk in your homeroom class in high school who was like, "Oh, you didn't see it? Well, so and so dies." You know? And right. It's like. So what I'm set what my argument though here for for no movie theaters would be that one I think television shows and production values are just coming up in a much more achievable way mm-hmm. um and you're really going to need that big time argument and like to to go because you'd be like missing out to have not seen it yeah is what it comes down to and I think that there would be fewer and fewer circumstances where 
there's enough hype around any given movie release to where that argument would win. Mm -hmm. And like, so again, we keep talking about like Endgame. We were all, pr or Star Wars, we're all pretty darn invested, yeah. you know, in those narratives because we've been watching it for such a long time. So the idea of like waiting for it to come out and it's mm -hmm. like, well, no, I'm going to go see it because I need to know yeah. what happens right away. But like take away those stories that have much more of a, a like a long, a long standing history or, or build up to it, anticipation and deliver just like just any other movie. Like mm -hmm. what what makes it so remarkable that you can't just wait for it to come out on streaming or whatever the case may be that you like the experience of going to the movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And is that but is that ingrained into us? Right. Like, the, yeah. Because of nostalgia, because like we can go back to seeing the the original Lion King in theaters to seeing Aladdin to seeing Toy Story mm -hmm. like you know when we were five six years old yeah it's you know, like well yeah I can it, I can see a future where it's like movie theaters are like far and few in between where it's like oh you know what we're gonna like we're on vacation we're gonna go do this thing you can see a movie and the screen is like the it's, it's so big it's, it's massive it's so big it's like yeah it's like yeah they don't they used to be everywhere the COVID has, nah, this is like a real treat it's a real yeah, yeah. yeah it's like like movies exist for like movie theater lovers rather than like yeah I don't I don't know in the same way that it would be kind of fun to like type a to type a letter on a typewriter it's like it's kind of fun to press those buttons right. like what a what a sensation what yeah. a world oh yeah like no, no you, you said to do it this way look at this click clack 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 yeah right 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 yeah yeah so anyway that anyway was, I, I didn't intend for that to be yeah. so much of yeah. our so much of our conversation 39 minutes later here we, we sure are did. we sure did yeah but i think we didn't even get one bullet point down into our notes for it and we need to because we just we first of all just have to say holy butts thank you so much to everyone who signed up on patreon for the person card special offer because we had to order more cards. We, I mean, <laughs> truly, it, it was like when we first started looking at them. I, I want to say that the the quantities that we could that we could buy them in was like two hundred and fifty or five hundred. Yeah, that, does that sound right? And we yeah. were like, at I think at the time that we were looking at it, we were like, well, we could probably do two fifty, but we might we might go over. So we're like, well, we'll. We'll buy 500 and then we'll we'll have extras and like, you know, maybe we can it would be like a fun, a fun thing to have right. later. And then coming into last week. No, we're over we're 500. Over. We had to order more. <laughs> we're over 600. We're over it's, 600. It's unbelievable. It's, oh, man. It was just like unbelievable support from all of you little curdles out there. So we you, you cleaned us out of our person cards. We had to order more. So if you were in that initial run, you'll be getting your person card sooner. And then if you are over, if you're part of the second order, it will come. They take like, unfortunately, like three weeks to make. Yes, because they're like, they're like literally pieces of metal that yeah. are like laser cut. So I'm sorry. It will take you a little longer to get yours, but they will come. They will, will come. make sure yes. everyone gets their person cards. Um, uh, very excited about. Yes. Yeah, so thank you to, to everybody over on Patreon. Uh, and again, uh, it's still now, although we don't have a special offer running, uh, if you would be interested in supporting us on Patreon, we do have bonus content that comes out after every single week. So if you want an extra 15, 20 minutes of the pop, we have a, a lovely little add on episode called after, after the, the final, final pop, pop, which I like to imagine is like, you know, if you're, I mean, you know, we don't do this, but microwaving popcorn and you, it's like you put the microwave bag in, right? I guess. And tell me if you remember this experience from our childhood, but it was like you would microwave it for three minutes, right? Sounds long, but sure. Right. No, you would, but you would stop it at like 48 seconds. Oh, yeah, I do remember this. But you, you can't just microwave it for two minutes and 12 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that doesn't work. That doesn't work. You have to microwave it for three minutes. You had to like. And stop it you early. Had to, you know, whatever, whatever you perceived to be the microwave's ramp up time to, to like complete the three minutes you had to like no no, no. you wanted to think it's going to do three minutes but you stop it at 43 because that's the point in the cycle yes <laughs> yeah something yes. like that like in my mind as a kid this made perfect sense it, perfect it was sense. like no 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 no, no, no. 
You start at three minutes, you stop it at 43 seconds. Perfect. And it was like, without, and, and it worked. It did work. You know, if you just, if you set it for the actual amount of time it ran, not the same. Not the same. Yeah. Nope, not even at all. Not also, some, some microwaves have like the popcorn button, like, as if. As, like, as like, if. Oh, come on. Okay. Nick, I think we can, we, we have faith that the little kernels are all, at the very least, uh, like, stove top. Stove top. Stove top popping. Pop. Yeah. yeah. No but anyway, doubt. after the final pop is like that moment where like it's like the it's like when you've realized like that's the last pop I'm waiting for. Yeah. You know, but then there's a few pops after that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You follow? Yeah. Uh, Good analogy. Uh, so when I take my stove top pop stove top pop, go to the bowl. Yeah. I got to do a little shake. Oh, yeah. me too. And then every now and then. Uh, like as I'm shaking it, there will still be like a kernel like stuck on the bottom. Okay, it'll explode. But now it has now that gravity is in its favor, it's like boom. Yes, and like all of them come rushing out. They all come rushing out. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, my dogs love that pop mm. because it it usually causes a few of them to like scatter onto the floor. Inevitable. Inevitable. Yeah. And then they come and clean it up for me. Right. Because they're they're great dogs. Anyway, patreoncom slash popcorn culture. Uh, if you guys would like to check that out, we yeah. do appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, while we're talking about popcorn, because we have a lot this episode. Which which is uh, maybe, you know, given the title of our show, you'd think we talk about it more. But do you have a corny joke for us, Ben? Hey, look at you go. I do. You know hey. what? I do. And this one actually comes from Colonel Hermione. Oh. I like to think that that's their real name. I'd like to think it was actual Emma Watson. A yeah. Do you think it could be? <sighs> it, it's probably not. But. Okay. I'm going to get to my corny joke. Yeah. But sometimes this is like, you know, like we've made lots of, you know, videos about Harry Potter stuff. Yeah. Uh. I mean. What what are the odds that like Daniel Radcliffe or Emma Watson or Rupert Grint have like, seen just one? Have just like seen like that? Like, do you think they've seen us? <sighs> hmm. Dude, is it possible? I, it's that that feels possible that as people who portrayed the characters we talk about, they've seen a, a single video that we have made. Could we ever get? Yeah, it's like, is there ever like fine? I you know what? I've got to know. Is Filch a poltergeist? Right. You know? Is Hagrid rich? What? Huh? <laughs> Never considered it. Never considered it. Yeah. I think he is. Hashtag swaggered. Um, anyway, <laughs> corny joke for you. Yeah. Jay, what's big and gray and doesn't matter? What's big and gray? And doesn't matter. And doesn't matter. I, I do not know. An irrelevant. Oh, <laughs> an irrelevant. You get it? You get I it? I get it. Yeah, it's because yeah, elephants it's are irrelevant. big and gray. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. That's hilarious. This is a good one. That was, that it was reminds me of the uh, what's black and white and red all over. Oh, like a newspaper? A newspaper. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. like a different version of red. Yeah, you think you're like, what's big? It's like a bloody zebra? Or <laughs> 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 um, I, actually, as a when I was a kid, I think that there was a, a maybe six month period of time where I had heard that joke, uh, black and white and red all over. And I was like, do newspapers use red ink? Like it, it was kind of like I, I wasn't getting the, oh, you, like, yeah, the pun. R E A D. Yeah. yeah, the play on words. I, I was getting like just like I was like, oh, yeah, because the it does seem like every once in a while the corner of a newspaper has like a little little like red like red blotch on it maybe mm -hmm. like the, the ink printer needed to like a, for alignment purposes or something like you know my mind that's where my mind went as a kid my mind as a kid did that totally um actually thing where it's like uh, newspapers have color printing so that joke doesn't make sense um yeah. actually um actually wow uh were Shoving you that, were you that kid i was not that kid i was gonna say i had no, no. recollection of that <laughs> but i mean as long as as long as we're we're doing all of our our kind of running segments here on the on the pop next up is a fun fact about coyotes oh a fun fact about coyotes I, I, you know what the more i learn about coyotes the more i love them oh yeah yeah this is this doesn't feel like a popular opinion because no? i i'm i don't i don't know in my i'm being in crushed. my experience in the world i would have thought that the general opinion of coyotes was negative but you're you're bringing me around oh thank them. goodness thank yeah. goodness we're we're very pro coyote apparently <laughs> I, I think <laughs> we just, all of all of our farmer little kernels were just like unsubscribe. <laughs> yeah, like, none of that. No coyotes. No coyotes. No. Um. Well, okay. So this one, this one really, honestly, it gave me extra feels for my oh, okay. my my coyotes yeah. out there. Um. Apparently, altruism is actually something that has been observed with coyotes, where they will actually bring food to um, like other like trapped or injured coyotes like oh. they will actually like bring them food to, like, oh. help them help them get by which well that's nice i don't i don't know why it's like 
it's such simple things, you know, when you hear mm-hmm. it like that. But yeah. it's just like to imagine uh, like creatures that you sort of expect that their full objective in life is purely like survival yeah. at all costs. It's hard to imagine a, like a wild animal uh, administering generosity. Yeah, like give it, giving up some of its food. So that something else could be better off. Right. And that makes me happy. Oh, there you go. Look at coyotes being all altruistic. Look at him go. Dude, speaking of people uh, giving people stuff, segue. Segue. Look at you go. There we go. There we go. I have received an item in the mail, Ben, which I believe you can see. I can. Because I'm holding it. (laughs) Because we're only about three feet apart. Right, right. Uh, This came in from uh, Richard. You know who you are, Richard. And Ben, it, it it brings me it brings me joy, but mixed mixed emotions maybe because what Richard has found and mailed to the pop is the yellow t shirt with the red splotch. I Jay, I cannot even tell you how many like memories and emotions it's still like excessively <laughs> large for you it it's, feels it's like still too big is it is it like Let's what see. size is this it this is a meat yeah you're right this is a medium this and is it a, looks too big you are you are like what like six one 185 pounds you know maybe? it occurs to me that probably as an eighth grader when i had the shirt the first time that like i was like you know i was recently i was in the process of going through puberty you know okay, so sure, yeah. i was very like excited to be tall so like i would like i would get larges when i did not need them yeah you know because i look back and i'm like i'll look at me like that that was kind of big i don't think that because like now when i go to the store and i buy a t-shirt i'll get a medium and it fits pretty good yeah and if i put in a large and like and i'm bigger now than i was in high school i've noticed that yeah yeah yeah. definitely bigger now that i'm because you know i'm not running an hour a day anymore for cross country so i sort of filled out a little bit sure and mediums fit appropriately. Larges are still kind of big. So the way that you dressed when you were smaller was still too big for you now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get it. You nailed it. I nailed so it. I'm wondering if I had a large back then, because that would make sense. But I've got a medium now. It looks big. It looks big. For the, for the folks big. at home, we talked about this particular T-shirt. It was one that Jay got during his high school years that I, I feel like you clung to. It is a yellow shirt with a red blotch on it mm. that looks mostly like you had a uh, a shooken up bottle of ketchup that like, exploded yeah. and then never, the stain just didn't come out. Didn't come out. But instead it's intended to be, I, I believe a rather it's, abstract illustration of a, of a guitarist. It's supposed to look like a guy playing the guitar and like I can still see it playing his day. But not once, not once when I was wearing this uh, in school did anyone ever say, like, cool guitar shirt, man. <laughs> Which, <laughs> like, cool. was that the goal? Was that the goal? Because to me, it was like, you had to you had to see it. Like, once you saw it, it was like, oh, that's cool. Right. But it turned out it was too hard to see. Too hard to see. Too hard to see. Even when you explained it to people. And then it's like, oh, best case, best case scenario, it's just a guy playing a guitar. So like, so what? <laughs> like, do you do you know the guy? Yeah, <laughs> is it who you? Is, who is that? Are you like a fan? Like, no, it's just I don't. It's I don't know. It's, I have my shirt. <laughs> I thought about. I, thought, I have this <laughs> shirt. Oh no! Oh, this is a cool shirt, right, Ben? I feel like we can do better than this shirt. This shirt has failed. Like we we need like a popcorn culture abstract shirt yellow shirt with a red splotch on it you know what i mean Do, that, well that the little kernels can the, and people will be like what's <laughs> what's that shirt hold on like, <laughs> does it have to be the color of condiments <laughs> because it is mustard yellow with ketchup red <laughs> yeah we could present. choose a, we could choose a better yellow and a better red <laughs> okay but you're stuck, have, on the, you're stuck on the no, scheme this is the shirt this is the color scheme we need to correct this injustice in the universe it needs to be corrected okay you see it? I well, like, someone I see it. tried to it's make it. It's hard not to see it. <laughs> someone tried to make a yellow shirt with a red splotch on it and they failed and we can fix it and it's going to be it can do it better. And it's like a sample email in my mind to our graphic design guy is, "Hey, Vaishan, can you design us a yellow shirt with a red splotch on it?" Only requirement is that the red splotch cannot look like a guy playing a guitar. <laughs> Color me on board. So there we go. So, uh, you know, I think I feel like we can do it. We should. There should be like we could have like a little negative popcorn culture logo somewhere I in do, there. I do think that's essential because yeah. then, then the little kernels who are sporting said T-shirt can go out into the wild, and people will be like, 
what is up with your shirt? What is that? Is that like a, a splotch or spill? Like what, what happened there? And then, you know, they can explain that it is definitively not someone playing a guitar. Yeah. And uh, that, and that it is supporting their, yeah. their favorite S- podcast. Sample, sample conversation. When you are wearing this shirt is people be like, what's on your shirt? And what, what you have to say when people ask is it's not someone playing a guitar. That's the, like, what's on your shirt? Well, not someone playing a guitar. I'll tell you that. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. Like, let me tell you what it isn't. Like, like to be clear. <laughs> to and be then, clear. And then they'll be like, like did, did, did that be, need to be clarified? Did, 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 they'll be like, you know, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You'd be people surprised. People ask me all people, the time. People are like, are you wearing a shirt? With a guy playing a guitar, but like, it's, no, it's definitely not. No, no, no. You know, it's definitely not that. <clears throat> that. Oh man, I think you could have like just a cool shirt that just looks like it has like splatter on it, though. Oh, that, absolutely. Like, is cool. Yes. I yes. think the problem is that this tried to look like something when it should have just been. It should have been just nothing. Been, it should have been nothing. That would have been cooler. It's people underestimate <clears throat> the value of nothing. <laughs> they should. They should. Whoever this made this shirt, whoever you are. You you did not value nothing. It makes me wonder if their objective when designing the shirt was to have it be entirely abstract. And they yeah. were like, hold up. Does this kind of look like a guy playing a guitar? Right. And should we they... like, should we lean into that a bit? And people were like, well, we can't. How about we lean into it like 15%? And, <laughs> yeah. and so, some people will get it. Most won't. Most, most won't. The, the good news is, is that it's a great looking piece of splotch. If not, right, and if so, then, then people will be like, "Yes, I love." You know what? People have so overdone clear cut images of people playing guitars. Yeah, we need. I want. I want or, it to be hard to see. Exactly. <laughs> I want it to be hard to see, and if you do see it, you'll and you know about playing guitars, you'll be like, "That's not how you hold a guitar," and that'll be the icing. <laughs> that'll be the icing. Yeah. That'll make it. That'll make it all the better. Yeah, and, and then they'll probably follow it up with, "Do you play?" No, certainly not. <laughs> I don't. Do you know who that is? It's no, no. Okay, <laughs> everything about that shirt made sense when I purchased it. Yeah, but now it it. I don't know what happened to my original shirt, but it doesn't matter because it's found its way back to me. It did. It, the, I, the shirt is back. It, I, it is. I will. I need to take a photo in the new shirt. You do. You and do. And we'll put it on the Patreon. Well, yes. Okay. That's perfect. For the little that's kernels. Perfect. It is so familiar to me, this exact shirt that's in yeah. front of me, that it, like, in my mind, I feel like there's an off chance possibility that it was, in fact, your original <laughs> shirt. <laughs> it's, it's the only one that ever sold at any Express anywhere. <laughs> yes. And it, it went to a Goodwill and it found it. Someone found it and they were like, I'm, put, I'm selling this right back, right <laughs> yes. back into the ether. And it was purchased and sent back to me. Yep. So, yeah. yeah. Now, maybe I've actually considered, I feel like even just a, a calendar, all 12 months, you wearing the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Every single month is just... <laughs> it's just be, if I, if it's in the same picture? Or is it like... <laughs> Like, what's this? What's this month? Oh, it's the same. I like one. I like maybe like the month of June. You've gone guitar <laughs> shopping, and it's literally a picture of you holding a guitar. And <laughs> oh man! <laughs> While wearing the shirt to really send it home. <laughs> oh man, that's a new pride. That's a new pride. Okay, so we'll we'll keep you posted. Maybe maybe if there's any interest, we'll try and make our our improved. Yellow and red splatter shirt. Yes, <laughs> for uh, for the pops. I love it. Now we've talked a little. Now we're nearing nearing the end of the show, which yeah. is to be determined by no one because we run the show. We do. Yes. Yeah. No uh, one pulls our levers. No one, no one, that's right. We'll decide where the show ends. And I, since we're talking about ketchup and mustard, I need to bring up a conversation my wife and I always have when we have hot dogs. Okay. Okay. So, which isn't often. You know, as an as 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 adults, we're not just like you want to fry up some hot dogs for dinner. <laughs> fry up hot fry, dogs. Yeah. How are you making your hot dogs, bro? Sometimes I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be trouble to fire up the grill. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> exactly. That's actually it. So I was just like, I'm just gonna pan fry these. You know, whatever. Sure. Yeah. Sure. At least you're not boiling them. <laughs> yeah. No, we're not boiling the hot dogs. Anyway. I'll, I'll be like in the process of getting the condiments out of the fridge and I'll be like, yeah, what do you want? You want ketchup? And my wife will look at me. She will stare daggers at me and be like, no, I don't want ketchup. I'm a hot dog purist. I only want mustard. And I'm always like really caught off guard by this 
<laughs> I'm presently caught off guard by this. <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Because <laughs> I put out a tweet the other day that was that said, if you're a hot dog purist, what does that mean you put on your hot dog? And I made the available options, just ketchup, just mustard, both or neither. And uh, I think neither ended up winning, uh, I think. I don't know. I know that mustard came in last. I can tell you that. Okay, but, good. But good. The, here's the thing. The problem with this poll is that everyone answered it basically just according to what they, how they eat hot dogs. Okay. You know, so they were, people are just listening like, no, no, this is how I like it. Or this is, this is the best way to eat. And it's like, I, I understand. Hey, you can have your own way of eating hot dogs and you can have your preferred way of eating hot dogs. But what is, if, <laughs> what, I'm trying to understand what my wife is saying. Like, where did she get the idea that a hot dog purist puts just yellow mustard on their hot dog? Right. I understand what you're saying. So like the question is almost like, uh, like, like a Cheerio purist is not eating Honey Nut Cheerios. Right. A, a, a Cheerio purist is eating Cheerios. Exactly. Okay. Great yes, example. Yes, yes. Like okay. you can say like, what's the best kind of Cheerios? And you might and say you, something you might, else. It might be another kind. It's really, the best kind of Cheerios is really anything but regular Cheerios like, while we're on that like, topic. Truly and honestly, yes. what even is Cheerios other than, I imagine like ground up powdered like meal that is then formulated into rounds. Yeah, I think I think Cheerios exists because the cereal world is like, we need a starting point. We need <laughs> somewhere to go. We right. need somewhere to to have started from. And from there we can do more. Yes. But at least we need we need somewhere to grow from. So we have Cheerios. So we have Cheerios. Yeah. I don't understand it even at all. But anyway, so yeah, like my question to you is what what is a pure hot dog? Not, not 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 to be confused with the, what what, no, is, what is a hot dog made of? <laughs> That's a whole different problem. Hot dogs are made of hot dogs. Like if you're if you're at a if you're at like the Fourth of July cookout and you're like loading up your fixins and someone's like and you you like ask you ask your wife you're like you what do you want she's like well just give me a pure hot dog what, what do you order yeah okay in my mind I I think that I would assume that it is ketchup and mustard. Right. I think that that is what I would – and I would imagine them to be in perfectly equal squiggles that are exactly inverse from one another. Yeah. So, like, if you can imagine making a wavy line with the ketchup. So, and it looks kind of like a DNA thing. It kind of looks like yeah. a helix. Yeah. A helix of condiments. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> that could be the title of today's episode. <laughs> helix of condiments. <laughs> People will get, like, an hour in and be like, why is it called that? <laughs> but that, to me, in my mind, I think that hmm. ketchup and mustard are the most – common condiments and like i imagine plenty of people out there because i know that hot dogs especially it, it can almost be like pizza like depending on where you're from in the world it can yeah. be like like relish is yeah. like that's the only way you eat a hot dog or uh i think some hot dogs have like a pickle on them or something yeah um like all sorts of just you know different different combos and stuff but yeah no i would i think that for me personally if i had to just take a random stab into the mystery meat it would be ketchup and mustard that that to me is also like if you were like a hot dog purist like i don't embellish i don't i don't deviate from the way it was intended excuse me yeah is that is that the way a hot dog was intended is the question i Ooh. guess is that that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of what is the point of a hot dog what is yes how is how did the inventor of the hot dog <laughs> hope you would consume <laughs> exactly the hot dog? that to me is a pure hot dog then right where they just like Maybe what? Yeah, like what? What were they imagining? They were like, I want, I want this tube of meat. I want it on a bun. I want yellow squiggle and a red squiggle. Is that what they were intending? <laughs> I think that's what they were intending. <clears throat> that to me, yeah. that feels like because because and this like I think that a hot dog feels to me like a rather humble meat because it's effectively made of like the leftovers. So yeah. to me. The hot dog. If and if what I'm a ha- poetic if I, way to describe a hot dog. If, if, if I'm being <laughs> like, just like, it came from nothing. It came from nothing. It wasn't supposed to exist. <laughs> right. No. Like it. It feels like something where it's like supposed to be, uh, like a rather, like non wasteful idea. Like it's supposed to be like okay. Like there there are byproducts of the production of 
more commonly purchased meat products is there something we can do with what's what with what's left over and therefore to me it would it would seem and and i don't know this is like a chicken and the egg conversation like what came first the hot dog or the 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 drawer things in the door of your fridge that holds all the condiments because to me like almost any fridge i would imagine would contain their humble condiments ketchup and mustard yeah you know, it's a way to give it like a, a slightly diverse flavor. Spectrum. Like, did someone start with like mustard and ketchup, and they were like, you know, what? I want to create a thing that is a vehicle for these things together. Well, no, I I don't even think that's the objective. It's almost like it's like if you were to take the like the the creation of the hot dog as like the leftovers, effectively, yeah. then the idea would be like, how can you make it good with something that people also all just have? at right. home anyway mm, like the I idea see. is like it's supposed to be a meal that like that like requires just little to no effort whatsoever yeah uh, you know or additional purchases i see so my i guess in my mind ketchup and mustard would just exist in your household anyway like you like i think i buy a new bottle of ketchup once a year yeah and then i just have that bottle for the whole year i don't i never think about adding ketchup to my to my right. grocery yeah. list as if like it's like Hey, Han, we're out of ketchup. Like, that's it's never an essential statement. Right. One bottle of ketchup lasts a year. There you go. Okay. All right. Mm. Well, I'm very curious to know what the little colonels think about yes. the intended way to enjoy it. Not the, the, not the way you, you enjoy, enjoy it. it. It's okay to enjoy it however you want. Right. To have your own favorite. But what is what do you believe is the intended way? Right. Right. And don't, yeah, there's, there's a very different things. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, and you can send all of your, uh, responses to that to popcornculturepod at gmail.com. I realized, um, after the, the most recent episodes of the pop that we haven't given the specific lo- location to send feedback. Okay. And so some people on Reddit and a couple of other emails have come through where people are like, I don't know where to send this. So yeah, popcornculturepod at gmail.com for any feedback you have on any of our episodes. <coughs> uh, I do read your emails. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously we can't, re- we can't respond to all of them, but I do appreciate what you guys send in with all of your thoughts. <coughs> but otherwise I feel like we're at a, we're at a fantastic stopping point. I think we are. We've reached reached that we've talked about hot dogs. We've talked about hot dogs. Yeah. We've we got there eventually. We got. In there. fact, yeah, I'm even a little proud of this episode because I feel like the first half, forty minutes of it, we actually discussed what was like the intended purpose of this podcast in terms of hmm. like subject matter. Sure. Which is talking about you know the world of of media yeah. and such. You know, sometimes we'll dip into that. That's a part of our lives. It, for sure. Yeah, every once in a while. But we also need, but you guys need to know where we came from. Exactly. Because how can you know where we're going? Unless you know what kind of hot dog you like. Guys, thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of The Pop. I want to give a special thank you to these patrons who support us over on Patreon. Thank you to Caitlin Orocho. Did that sound good? That sounded good. I felt like I had confidence. I believe it. Thank you, Caitlin. Desmond Mency II, Joshua Cooper, Megan, Crazy Panda Kitty, Alana Bradley, Ava Kunzelman, Cindy Chrysella, Katie Gadzella, and Rosalind. Thank you guys so much. Thanks so much. New supporters over on (laughs) Patreon. So shout out to you guys. If you guys want to support us on Patreon, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash popcorn culture. Otherwise, until next week. Pop, pop.